evening, but we thought we'd do some poetry, and we have Ian Gray and Colin Kirkwood here. Colin's written a few books about poems and in the past, and uh, is a good friend from Edinburgh, and uh, I just thought we'd just see how it goes, and uh, we're not doing open mic poems, as yet, but it might come in the future. We could do open mic poems. We could. Well, you all start then, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go then. Well, I'm going to give you three poems, uh, one of them in Gaelic with uh, English translation, the second one in German with English translation, and I'm going to finish off with Hugh McDermott. Okay? First of all, uh, the poem by Solly MacLean, the great 20th century poet of Gaelic Scotland. As a young man, Solly was desperately deeply in love with a young woman in Skye, and he wrote a huge number of poems for her. And the poem I'm going to read to you is one of those poems. Um, it's called in Gaelic, Leonverech Ans Nasperen, in English, Tumultuous Plenty in the Heavens. The translation, incidentally, is by Ian Crichton Smith, who is another Gaelic poet. And the reason I've chosen this poem is that his translation is a particularly good one. <coughs> all his translations were sometimes a little bit doubtful, to be quite honest. Okay. So I'll start off with the English translation by Ian Crichton Smith. Tumultuous plenty in the heavens, gold sieve of a million stars, cold, distant, blazing, splendid silent and callous in their course. Fullness of knowledge in their going, an empty, chartless, ignorant plane. A universe in soundless motion, a brooding intellect alone. It was not they that woke my thinking. It was not the miracle of their grave, fearful process, but your face a naked universe of love. Anisha Antigalic. Leon Verech Ans Naspeer, O Rieche Mullion and De Rioten, Fur, Fad As, Lok Vor Allen, Totdach, Nira Arco, Nira Archech. Lanach and Jonas Mancursa. Falavi and Anulus gun hu hasht, Kunya ke et glusset sabach, and your recha heen san aren. Can Ibsen a gluish mus mention? Can ye mirevel an irche unui? Can ye a virevel ach an gul yuen? Solcher Krunya and Lassak Turdin. Uh, the second poem that I've chosen is by uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, uh, who wrote mainly in German, although to my knowledge he also wrote in French <coughs> and in Russian. Uh, he was born in Prague in 1875. And at the beginning of the 20th century, for about two years, he was secretary to Rodin, the great French sculptor. And when he arrived in Paris, he thought he was suffering from writer's block. And he told Rodin about this. And Rodin had no time for this kind of rubbish. He, he actually said to him, hey, Rilke, why don't you go into the Jardin du Luxembourg? There's so many things happening there, you'll soon write a lot of new poems. And that's what Rilke did. And in fact, a few years later, in, I think it was in 1909, he actually published a collection of poems called Dinoe Gedichte, The New Poems. And the poem I'm going to read to you is the first of the new poems. When Rilke first went into the Jardin du Luxembourg, virtually the first thing he saw was a beautiful black creature, a panther, in a cage that was far too small for it. And he wrote this poem for this poor, doomed 
creature. The translation is my own, incidentally, and I'm going to give that to you now. His gaze from the passing of the bars has become so tired that it holds nothing more. For him, it is as if a thousand bars were there, and behind the thousand bars, no world at all. The soft gait of lithe, strong paces that turn in the very tiniest of circles is like a dance of power around a centre in which, benumbed, a great will stand. Only now and then does the curtain before the pupils open without sound. Then a picture enters, goes through the tense stillness of his body and closes in his heart. Yes, auf Deutsch. Der Panther von Rainer Maria Rilke, Paris 1903, vielleicht schon Ende 1902, das erste der neuen Gedichte. Sein Blick ist von Vorübergehen der Stäbe so mut geworden, dass er nichts mehr hält. Ihm ist, als ob es tausend Stäbe gäbe und hinter tausend Stäben keine Welt. Der weiche Gang geschmeidig starke Schritte der sich im allerkleinsten Kreise dreht, ist wie ein Tanz von Kraft um eine Mitte, in der beteut ein großer Wille steht. Nur manchmal schiebt der Vorhang der Pupille sich lautlos auf. Dann geht ein Bild hinein, geht durch der Glieder angespannte Stille und hört, im Herzen auf zu sein. Wir wollen. And I'm going to finish off by, uh, with a poem by Hugh McDermott in Scots. Uh, the poem is called The Bonny Brookit Bear, the Beautiful Neglected Child. And in this poem, which is a very short one, McDermott is actually looking at the place of the earth in the universe, in the heavens among the stars and the planets and the moon. Okay. And what he's actually saying in this poem is that earth has something that those other bodies do not have, at least to our knowledge, and that is life. Okay. And he suggests that when the word earth weeps, then the whole universe will drown. So Bonnie Brook at Bairn by Hugh McDermott. Mars is bra in Cramer Sea. Venus in a green silk goo. The old moon shags her golden feathers. Their starry talks a queen or blethers. Name for thee a thochty spearin. Earth thou bonny Look it, Bairn. But greet, and in your tears you'll droon the hill Hanjampri. Another beautiful poem. Inter the inter one of the interesting things about this particular poem, apart from the rhymes that take place within the poem, the first line actually rhymes with the last line, and the second line rhymes with the penultimate line, you know, which shows some cleverness on the part of McDermott, I have to say. But all, the, all these poets, the ones that I've given, the poems I've given you now, have always been, have been very, very important for me uh, during my life. And McDermott was actually one of the greatest. That's me. Now you've got Colin to look forward to. <laughs>